Good evening, I'm Ashley Scott on our top stories on News Update today. Benja has alleged assailant granted $50,000 bail today. PVB says petroleum licenses should be auctioned. Guyana preparing for ICJ to settle Venezuela border controversy. And social media sensation teardrop charged with robbery. Now for the news and details. The People's Progressive Party is lambasting the government for not disclosing where the funding will be coming from to construct a new harbor bridge. Sandy Ramatar with the details. The Harbour Bridge project will be saddled with debts and corruption as the structure would have no sovereign guarantee. This is a firm statement of General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Bharat Jagdeo. Jagdeo describes the project as one of the biggest investments to be undertaken by the country following the Chetty Jagan International Airport expansion and Skeldon Factory construction. The new bridge, excluding the road and acquisition of property, will cost in excess of $150 billion. Jagdeo also questioned whether there will be an increase in tolls. So guess what the government has to do now? Decisions on what extent the government will be involved, what's the funding structure, what will be the cost of finance, and what will be toll increases. Now we're not hearing the government on any of these things. The PPP leader also alleged that the location in for sales on the west bank of the Amarara belongs to an APNU affiliate. He says the proprietor will receive millions of dollars to hand over the land to the government. Miraculously, this feasibility study now finds that location feasible, the most feasible. So Stanley Ming knew in 2015, without any feasibility study, he had already selected the site. And Miraculously, the feasibility study supports this. According to him, the closest location to the current bridge was cited as the best site by subject minister under the PPP, Robson Ben. Jagdeo says an enormous length of work was already undertaken by the past administration, where about six location studies were done. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The individual who is accused of injuring Trinidad Soka artiste Benjai was placed on $50,000 bail today. The Trini Soka artiste was also present in court. Nikhil John who filed this report. 25-year-old Maverick Diabro was placed on $50,000 bail when he appeared before Magistrate Fabio Zor. Diabro pled not guilty to the charge which alleged that he maliciously wounded Rodney Benjai LeBlanc on April 16, 2017, Benjai came from neighboring Trinidad after he was able to secure attorney Yuzi Anderson to represent him in court. On April 16, LeBlanc claims that he was wounded by Diabro while at Palm Court. LeBlanc, who had just finished headline a soca party at the night spot, was in the company of his entourage outside Palm Court. It was during that time the driver of a car which was parked at the night spot's entrance began to drive off when LeBlanc hit the vehicle to notify the driver that he was too close to the group. The court was told that the driver stepped out of the vehicle and began to use expletives at LeBlanc and also threatened him with a gun. The court was further told during that time another individual came out from the same vehicle and threw an object at Benjai's group. The object smashed across the Soka RT's face. He was rushed to the Woodlands Hospital, where he underwent an emergency corrective surgery. The Soka RT's had 15 stitches to his right jaw. The accused, Diabro, who was placed on $50,000 bail, will return to court on October 11, 2017. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Residents of Cocoa Region 1 will receive portable water for the first time in December. The Guyana Water Incorporated has awarded the contract BK International Incorporated for the supply of materials, labor and equipment for the drilling of a well at Cocoa. The 80 meters deep well is intended to provide approximately 400 persons with portable water. 
Minister Foreign Affairs Carl Brin says Guyana is preparing to have the border controversy between Venezuela brought before the International Court of Justice. He says the, the good office's process that was initiated one year ago is not making any progress. Find out more in this report. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich said the government will not be in favor of having another extension of the United Nations Good Offices process. Minister Greenwich noted that it has been over a year now since former Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki-moon made the decision to extend that process. Well, we, we um, as good planners, you have to look forward and anticipate all possible outcomes. Minister Greenwich said President David Granger will be meeting with the new Secretary General of the United Nations on the sidelines of the 72nd session of the UN General Assembly. The meeting is scheduled for September 25, 2017 in New York. Minister Greenwich said Guyana is preparing should the matter be placed before the International Court of Justice. We have been doing work domestically and uh, putting together teams that can undertake that work. Venezuela has not recognized the 1899 Arbitral Award, which entitled Guyana to the Essequibo region. The issue has been brought to the forefront when U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil discovered high-quality hydrocarbons off Guyana's coast in the Starbrook block. The discovery was made in May 2015, just before the coalition government took office in that year. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. Welcome to Rossignol's Butchery. Here you'll find the freshest, most tender and flavorful meats, including steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and more, plus packaged meats and cheeses. All this in a highly hygienic atmosphere. In our store, there is a wide variety of canned goods, sauces, and marinades. Our friendly staff will cater to all your needs. Rossignol Butchery. We meet your needs. 7374 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone 223-0004. so much Windex for clean windows, all them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home and Eccles, it named Beeson, like you know nothing girl. Right now everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office or commercial building. You're still with News Update, welcome back. With the recent spate of armed robberies and shooting in the mining districts allegedly by foreign nationals, the government of Guyana has not formally engaged Venezuela on the matter. This is what Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich told the local media. Nikhil John Du filed this report. The main movements that, I've, that we've picked up 
has been of uh, Guyanese uh, or persons claiming to be of Guyanese origin who have come very often through Mabaruna or Wawuna area. Um, but but there, are, there are a number of others, some of whom have appeared in Georgetown, for example, uh, are clearly in need of assistance, and we will try to do what we can. At, uh, at points where there are villages on either side of the border, or towns not far from the borders, there has also been some movement. But I don't know that at this stage the numbers are, are massive. The bigger concern, the bigger worry, is of crime and, and the movement of weapons and guns in these border areas. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich said no formal discussion has been held with officials in Venezuela. He acknowledged that there have been three separate incidents that implicated Venezuelans nationals. In the first instance, three gold miners were shot dead at their camp in the Five Star Bagdam Northwest District. The purported foreign nationals also robbed the mining camp. That was followed by another robbery in the Cayuni Mazaruni region where the alleged foreign nationals began shooting at miners. The most recent assault on the mining industry was carried out on Sunday last in the Five Star Bagdam Northwest District. That incident has left one miner nursing a gunshot wound. Minister Greenwich said the situation remains a concern for the Guyanese authorities. It is not a problem peculiar to Guyana. I think there's been concern in the region as a whole even in those without contiguous land borders, such as Trinidad and Tobago, as to the impact of uh, quasi-military or militias, armed um, citizens who uh, may from time to time, or who it seems sometimes, have taken to, um, if you like, enterprise with the weapons that they've had. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Following speculations on the sale of petroleum licenses, the People's Progressive Party is advising the government to facilitate auctions instead of a random sale. This comes as Guyana gears to start commercial production of oil in 2020. Find out more in this Sandy Ramatar report. General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Barra Jaglu, believes the alleged random sale of petroleum licenses is not the way to go. According to him, an auction should instead be done for sale of the blocks. Those licenses will give companies permission to search for commercially feasible deposits for the extraction of petroleum off the Starbrook block. He says random sale of those blocks will allow companies to benefit more than Guyana by reselling it at a much higher price. So, they will get these blocks and weeks later, they will sell their blocks without any competitive process being followed because now there is no competitive process for awarding the blocks. They will get them and then sell them onwards. Jardy also claimed at least two persons in close affiliation with the present regime has applied to purchase those blocks that a number of front companies with key APNU AFC individuals and ministers and their, in, and their families as shareholders have submitted applications to the Ministry of um, natural resources for a petroleum exploration and production license. While there has been mounting calls for the opposition and stakeholders for the disclosure of the oil contract, the government has remained steadfast on its decision. In 2015, oil giant ExxonMobil made the first significant discovery of quality oil bearing sandstones off through Guyana. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. In an effort to highlight the great potential small businesses here in Guyana Hall for Entrepreneurs, Scotiabank hosted a one-day seminar under the theme, Managing Your Small Businesses for the Future. The Shauna Gomes Cornelius with the details. Speaking at the opening ceremony was Dr. Terence Smith, Deputy Governor of the Bank of Guyana. 
During his remarks, Dr. Smith, who holds a PhD in Information Systems from the Nova Southeastern University in Florida, explained the importance of small businesses to the country's economy while stressing on a few areas where potential small business owners should improve on to ensure their businesses flourish. Small businesses transform and develop communities. Entrepreneurs create ways to connect resources and grow to cross cultures, economic conditions, and political situations that differ from region to region. They must create strategies that will ultimately resolve major economic and social challenges, and in this sense, improve the quality of life of the region where they are located. In other words, small businesses are critical to the health of Guyana. Dr. Smith stressed, while small business is the foundation for employment, it is also critical to the transformation of the entire local economy. According to the statistics from CARICOM, the regional private sector creates at least 70% of jobs. Small businesses are central to creating jobs in our economy and operate in a variety of sectors including agricultural, manufacturing, tourism and service sectors. CARICOM's literature in indicates that small businesses plays several roles in the economic, social, and environmental development of the region. The one-day seminar also touched on some of the tax requirements for small businesses, content management system, CMS, as well as financial statements. Among the participants of the seminar were representatives from various small business agencies, banks, and insurance companies. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Thanks, Lashana. Coming up, reconstruction of Annandale Bridge to be completed by weekend. And more youths need to be part of Amerindian Heritage celebrations. You feel its attraction at once, its presence. Now, experience its power in your hands. In 1994, GBTI were the first to introduce the automated telemachine in Guyana. With the introduction of the Kaicho Classic Card, you have control of your finances in the palm of your hands. Kaicho Classic Card. Instant results the classic way. GBTI. Your friend, your bank. Yes, it's our biggest reduction sale on just for you. Celebrating our third anniversary this month at our Regent Street location. Check us out for our 2017 new designs and a wide selection of quality furniture readily available or made to order. Also, for your grocery, beverage, and stationery needs, check out our supermarket. We cater for that. And be sure to visit our hardware department as well. Prices are unbeatable. Shemakia Woodworking, Inc. Call us at 231-6020 or 276-3071. styles simply different live healthier cook with canola and vegetable oil from costco and sam's club america's largest wholesale distributors same nutrition value as wesson oil get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only nine thousand dollars members mark olive oil also available imported and distributed by isaac investments available in all dsl branches and leading supermarkets countrywide Isaac Investments, located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. Heritage Impressions, we are the experts when it comes to creative marketing, brand campaigns, concept development and production.
On Sunday, September 17, 2017, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is inviting residents of Section C, Turkan and Cummins Park, Section C, Cummins Lodge, to a public consultation at the Washby Tamar and Cummins Park Multipurpose Building, respectively. The consultation will address the reformulation of the Road Network Upgrade and Expansion Program. The project, which will be undertaken through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank and entails road upgrades, street lights and sidewalks, upgrades to playgrounds and community buildings and subsidies for construction of core homes and home improvements. Starting time, 16 hours at both locations. Motorists will be able to use the Annandale Bridge on the railway embankment this weekend. But this is when a new bridge will be unveiled to vehicles. Here's Sandy Ramatar. Work is moving fast pace on one of the three bridges that are to be reconstructed on the east coast of Demerara railway embankment. The bridge at Annandale has over time been in a deplorable state and is currently being rehabilitated. This is according to Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Annette Ferguson. The reconstruction of the three bridges at Pleasance, Annandale and Lusignan will cost the ministry over $63 million. Well, work is currently being done. Um, the contractor that is doing the work is KP Thomas & Sons Contracting Services. Once the project is completed by then, we would see the, 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 the bridge will be open, so it would help to take off some of the you know, backup traffic we have on the East Coast corridors. The bridge will be opened to vehicle art traffic over the weekend when it will be fully completed. The remaining bridges on the railway embankment will eventually be reconstructed, the minister said. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Ghana Power and Lighting Corporate's efforts are progressing to restore generation capacity to mitigate the occurrence of surface interruptions in the Demrar Burby's interconnected system. The current available generation capacity is approximately 116 megawatts, with a peak demand of approximately 112 megawatts. Whilst the available capacity may appear adequate to meet demand, it leaves insufficient reserve capacity to cater for unexpected and additional loss of generation, the company noted. GPL remains cognizant of the inconvenience these interruptions cause and wishes to reassure customers of that the company remains resolute in restoring a stable supply of electricity. The chairman of the National Tushaus Council, Joel Fredericks, urges more youths to be a part of the Amerindian Heritage Month celebrations. This is to ensure a century old cultures and information are transferred to the younger generation. The chairman of the National Tushau Council, Joel Fredericks, said that the indigenous people are proud of their culture. The chairman said that the council has noticed that youths are highly partaking in the activities planned for Amerindian Heritage Month. Frederick said that there are two problems that normally occur during Amerindian heritage celebrations, which are the need for more stakeholders and financial resources. The chairman said that the council is looking to have the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs assist in getting stakeholders on board. Financial support is also necessary since persons that travel to Georgetown would not have sufficient funds to manage their daily affairs. Amerindian Heritage Month 2017 was launched on September 1 under the theme, Guyana's First Peoples Sustaining a Rich Cultural Environment. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. As the government is serious about removing squatters from the city, the Central Housing and Planning Authority engaged the Mocha Arcadia Neighborhood Democratic Council about the relocation of the Lombard and Broad Street squatters to Barnwell. The Central Housing and Planning Authority held a meeting with councillors of the Mocha Arcade Neighborhood Democratic Council about the relocation of the Lombard Street squatters to Barnwell, a back of Mocha. Chief Executive Officer Leelon Saul said that the councillors raised some issues with the relocation. One, um, first and foremost, the consultation with the council was not timely. Um, the residents of Mako Arcadia, I think they learn of um, our decision via the media, which I think was bad. We should have consulted with them first. Um, secondly, they are concerned about new 
um, residents moving into the area. They believe that it will add to the social problems that the community is, um, the social problems that the community is currently facing. The Central Housing and Planning Authority collaborated with Food for the Poor to remove 43 families which are squatting on Lombard and Broad Streets. Reporting for MTB's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news to look ahead. Stay with us. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. You hungry? Yeah. No, no. I'll make something for us. So where are the spices? Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices! Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. Cooking is now made easier with Indy's new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika! That and many more, all in convenient size bottles. quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me confused and a price low to Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances. Located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. Like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> You're still with News Update. Welcome back. Country manager of Scotiabank, Raymond Smith, says, despite the fact that some banks in Guyana have a higher report on non-performing loans, Scotiabank is working with its customers to help them achieve the relevant requirements to ensure they benefit from the services from the bank. While for the first half of 2017, the economy has grown by 2.2%, the International Monetary Fund in June of 2017 reported that 12.9% of the loan portfolio in Guyana is non-performing at many of the nation's banks. That report had also revealed that there could ultimately be a contraction of loans from many of the nation's commercial banks. When asked whether Scotiabank has in place special standards, 
to ensure its customers are provided with easy avenues to acquire loans for various projects, such as for small business development, country manager of Scotia Bank Raymond Smith affirmed that such provisions are in place. So we do have funds available. We try our best to work with customers to provide the financing that they require, and we also advise them on alternative methods of financing their small business, be it from their own resources, um, from pooling funds from families, from family members, friends. Um, you know, we, we hear about crowd financing these days. There's also supplier financing, and you, and you can also take a, a upfront payment from your customers. So there, there are a number of ways a small business can, in fact, finance his or her business or immediate project that he or she uh, may be working on. But uh, as a bank, we do try as much as possible to work with our customers to qualify them to provide the financing. Smith further stressed, though Scotiabank is committed to working with its customers to acquire their financial goals, there are certain features that each of their customers has to work with to ensure they are in a position to ensure themselves and their businesses reach maximum potential. We do work with our customers regardless of whether it's a personal loan, a corporate, a commercial or a small business to seek out opportunities to provide financing. At the end of the day, um, the only way commercial banks make money is by lending. So if we're not lending, we're not making money. So it's in our interest to lend. So we try our best to work with customers to lend. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. The Ministry of Social Protection is collaborating with the Region 10 Administration and overseas-based Guyanese Anne Narine to construct a multi-purpose facility for vulnerable groups in Linden. The facility is to be constructed at Victory Valley Wismar at a cost of over $3 million. It will give children, youths and the elderly the opportunity to engage in social activities daily. The project will seek to create jobs in the area. The multi-purpose facility will be managed by the Community Development Council and is expected to be completed in December. The Mayan City Council is currently recycling cardboards within the city. Tom Clark Royston King said that this initiative will help the council to improve its finances and also to improve the environment. The City Council is in the process of recycling cardboard according to Tom Clark Royston King. King said that Due to the Caribbean containing cooperated closing for 36 months, it will give City Hall the advantage to recycle cardboard. King said that he had discussions with the chairman of the finance committee to hire a contractor for the project. We're thinking seriously about calling in um, a contractor to help us with the process of recycling cardboard because they're all over the place now. And I think that there's a good opportunity in that if we can recycle cardboard and if we can bring new products out of it, I think there's a good opportunity in that. King said that this initiative will ensure there's a healthy environment in the city. Not only for the city to make money, but also to continue to ensure the integrity of the environment. So we go, we're looking seriously at that. According to the Caribbean Container Incorporated Chief Executive Officer Patricia Bacchus, there has been a suspension of the operations of the paper recycling plant for 36 months and during that period, the board will decide if to continue or cease operations. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for regional and international news as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. We are the experts when it comes to creative marketing, brand campaigns, concept development, and production. With our diverse knowledge and tactical marketing strategies, we are the go-to company to reignite your brand. Having been in the industry for over 20 years, we're Ghana's number one choice for brand development.
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. IPED asks, are you involved in agriculture? Do you have crops, livestock, or poultry? Do you need finance to grow or expand your farms? IPED Agriculture loans from $40,000 to $20 million are designed to meet your needs. Repayment terms are based on crop cycle. IPED works and supports you through difficult times. With advice on technology and mentoring. Contact any of our 13 offices countrywide. IPED, improving livelihoods. Get going, keep growing with iPad. Gafos proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafools setting a new benchmark. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick bet for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Regional and international news taken from the BBC. Six people at a Florida nursing home that were left without power for days after Hurricane Irma have died. Police evacuated 115 residents on Wednesday from the facility whose air conditioning was cut by the storm. 10 million people are still without power in Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas after Hurricane Irma. The storm, which has claimed more than 2,000 lives in the U.S., struck southwestern Florida on Sunday morning as a Category 4 hurricane before weakening to a tropical depression on Monday. Irma earlier left a trail of destruction in the Caribbean, where nearly 40 people were killed. Meanwhile, Venezuela's Opposition Democratic Unity Coalition, MUD, has denied it will meet government representatives for formal talks on Wednesday. The MUD said it would not enter into talks until the government agreed to address Venezuela's humanitarian crisis and to release all political prisoners, among other issues. The country is in a deep political and economic crisis with the opposition and the government at loggerheads. Talks held last year collapsed. The worsening crisis led to mass anti-government protests between April and July. More than 120 people died in protest-related violence during that time. Here is what went down at the Georgetown Magistrates Court on September 13. The trial of convicted drug trafficker, Dennis Jones, who is accused of attempting to smuggle 22 pounds of cocaine to Canada through the Guyana Post Office, continued today with a testimony from Police Corporal Amir Mohammed. It is alleged that, on January 20 last, at the GPOC, Jones, 63, of Caneview Avenue, South Romville to Georgetown, had 10.618 kilograms of cocaine in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. He had pleaded not guilty to the charge and is on remand. According to reports, Jones, 
who was previously charged for drug trafficking, was arrested shortly after he attempted to ship cocaine in baking powder and banco wine to Toronto, Canada. Ranks from the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit intercepted a box containing the prohibited substance. During his testimony, Corporal Mohammed, who is a handwriting analyst, told the court that he has received on-the-job training in handwriting analysis. However, defense attorney UC Anderson, who is representing Jones, opposed to the police witness giving evidence on the ground that he does not possess the minimum qualification to be deemed competent. According to Anderson, Corporal Muhammad needs a lot more qualifications and experience to develop competence in the field of handwriting analysis. Kanu prosecutor, attorney at law Konyo Sandiford, is scheduled to reply to Anderson's objections on September 25. In 2012, Jones was jailed for four years for attempting to ship a large quantity of cocaine stashed in soap powder to an African state. Meanwhile, a 59-year-old man was jailed for four years and fined $30,000 after pleading guilty to trafficking 75 pounds of marijuana after making an appearance before Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman. Stanley Pyle admitted that, on September 10, at Norton and Camp Streets, he had 34.048 kilograms of marijuana in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit Prosecutor Conyo Sandiford told the court that, on the day in question, Kanu Ranks went to the home of Pyle, where they conducted a search and found a bulk marijuana in three carton boxes and two barrels. The prosecutor said that, while Pyle was taken to Kanu's headquarters, he admitted the ownership of the drug. According to the prosecutor, he claimed that someone living over the river gave him the narcotics. During his address to the court, Pyle, a father of seven and a grandfather of five, begged for leniency. He said that he is a single parent and has minor children to support. After considering all mitigating factors, the method used to conceal the marijuana, the quantum of the marijuana, the need to prevent authors from commissioning the offense and Pyle's early guilty plea, Magistrate Latchman imposed the custodial sentence and a fine. Social media sensation Leon Clark, called the Teardrop, was this morning released on $75,000 bail on a robbery charge. Clark, 23, of West Le Penitence, denied the charge which alleged that, on September 8, at Independence Boulevard, Alboystown, he robbed Vincent Howard of $980,000 cash, a quantity of GTT and Digicel phone cards, and $80,000 in scratch tickets. During his address to the court, Teardrop said that he works as an attendant at the Georgetown Public Hospital. He alleged that the police came to his place of work and assaulted him. An attorney for Teardrop said that his client uses social media to influence youths in a positive way. Nevertheless, Senior Magistrate Fabio Azor ordered Teardrop to make another court appearance on October 4. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 738. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbour Bridge schedule. Technology Wrap is next with Rajesh Lakhan. Stay with us.
When reliability is not an option, you need a supplier you can trust. This skilled technician depends on Forfin and Mendes for heavy-duty tools. This landscaper earns a living using still equipment. High rates of production and recovery lead to this sawmiller trusting his operation to wood miser. Mothers trust the water filtration systems for the health of their families. Thanks to the automatic backup systems, you'll never be left in the dark again. Farfan and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. You hungry? Yeah. No, no, I'll make something for us. So where are the spices? Oh, in the drawer. Wow, all these spices! Cardamom? Cumin seeds? Yes. Cooking is now made easier with Indy's new line of spices. And they even have smoked paprika! That and many more, all in convenient size bottles. This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breast to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like Anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Annie Bina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. On Sunday, September 17, 2017, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is inviting residents of Section C, Turkan and Cummins Park, Section C, Cummins Lodge, to a public consultation at the Washbit Tarmac and Cummins Park Multipurpose Building, respectively. The consultation will address the reformulation of the Road Network Upgrade and Expansion Program. The project, which will be undertaken through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank and entails road upgrades, street lights and sidewalks, upgrades to playgrounds and community buildings and subsidies for construction of core homes and home improvements. Starting time, 16 hours at both locations. and welcome to Star Technology Wrap. As always, I'm your host Rajesh Lakan, along with Yannick Sobers and this week we'll be discussing Samsung Television available right here at Star Computers. Yannick, go ahead. Okay, well um, Rajesh, as a lot of persons may know, well they may not know actually that we do sell TVs here at Star Computers and we're actually the authorized dealer in Guyana for Samsung televisions. So here at Star Computer we have a wide variety of different types of TVs, whether you're looking for a smart television or a, just a regular LED or even a 4K television, you can get those available here at Star Computer with your full warranty. Yannick, yeah, explain a little. I'm noticing this one and it says Samsung Smart TV. Yes, right. Explain Smart TV to me. Okay, well the term Smart TV, um, for persons who do not know, it basically it's a TV that allows you to connect to the internet. Now, some of the smart TVs, what you would find that they have an interface whereby you can go into a, a smart hub, as you would call it, and the smart hub allows you to have access to various apps like maybe YouTube, a web browser, um, you can even download additional apps to the TV, okay. which can allow you to get a little bit more functions out of it. 
also with um, smart TVs, um, you can be able to uh, stream content from different devices, whether it's a tablet or even a phone, you can stream them from your tablet or phone to the smart TV. Wirelessly too, you can do that with the smart TV. Say I'm interested in one of these smart TVs, mm -hmm. but I don't have all the cash. Is there any payment plan available? Yes, we actually have a payment plan called the Easy Financing Plan. Now this is a, a collaboration between us and Republic Bank, whereby the customer comes into the store, they get a quotation from us, you take the quotation into Republic Bank along with your necessary documents and they will process a loan for you. Once that loan is approved, you can come into Star with the check, purchase the item and then you repay the bank monthly. And it's a very simple and easy um, process. It's kind of like what we did with the back to school promotion with the laptop and the printer. How about after sale and warranty? Tell us about that. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're the authorized dealer for the Samsung TVs here. So you have a full after sale service available to you. So once the TV would not have been um, damaged by the customer, we can be able to look at it and service it. Once it's not something that has happened, in the event of you know the customer so let's say the screen cracks with you we wouldn't cover that but if it's some manufacturer problem we can cover those problems and warranty warranty on all tv is one year apart from the samsung television what else happening here at stars well um actually we recently brought in some 4k tvs and i was okay. going to show you a little bit about it so if you come this way with me let's go Yes, Roger. So this here, this is our 4K TVs, basically. And um, 4K TVs, they have a higher resolution than your regular um, TV, which would normally display at 1080p. This, the 4K TV, it, it displays at 4,000, I believe, by 2,500. So this would allow you to... HD. Yes, HD. And this would give you a much more crisp image, um, as you can see here with the plane flying and stuff. If there's like a fast moving object and so on, it would you would see the image much clearer and it, it's much more lifelike. So you get a more realistic image out of the 4K. Can you watch 3D movies from this television? Um, with the 4K, yes, yes. Okay. Apart from the 4K, tell us about this one. Okay, I like this one here. Okay, well this one here, it's a non-smart and it's a 48 inches and with the non-smart you still get a few cool features like um, you can actually plug a flash drive into this TV here like we're doing right now and you can be able to view all your movies and so on, videos on your TV. So you still get a lot of good usage out of the non-smart TVs. Um, also, um, they have very good resolution as you can see, you get 1080p full HD and the prices are always good at Star Computer, so if you're wondering about prices, come into Star and check them out for yourself. Apart from the smart TV and the 4K TV, what else happen here at Star? Well, as usual, we like to tell our customers to like our page on Facebook, make sure you keep connected with Star Computer and the Tech Rap Show, and thank you once again. Well, thank you, Yannick, and that's all we have for you in this week edition of Star Technology Wrap. Do join us next week, Wednesday, for another edition. Well, that sums up our newscast for tonight, but before we go, here's our recap of our major headlines. Ben Jai's alleged assailant granted $50,000 bail today. PPP says petroleum licenses should be auctioned. Ghana preparing for ICJ to settle Venezuela border controversy. And social media sensation teardrop charged with robbery. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Thursday, September 14. On behalf of our news team, I am Ashley Scotland. Thanking you for watching. Good night.